Friends, welcome back to Extraordinary Connections. My name is Dylan Burns. I'm the pastor at Manchester United Methodist Church and glad to be with you today here in my backyard. We've had a few days of beautiful weather. The sun has come out, it's warmed up the earth, and it's really ushered in what feels to me like spring, that season when life abounds. I've taken some walks around my neighborhood. I've seen my neighbors out in their yards gardening, putting their hands in the dirt and helping their flowers to thrive. And just this past week, I had a parishioner come by and drop off a whole bunch of planters of flowers from their garden. They had too many and wanted to offer some to me to help uh, enhance the flower beds around the parsonage. And I accepted them gladly, but I had to tell them that if they really cared deeply for these flowers, they wanted to see them thrive, then they might need to think again about giving them to me because I am just not that good at gardening. I have killed a lot of plants indoors and out. It doesn't matter. Which seems incredible, considering that there's only three things that a plant needs in order to live. Plants need sunlight, they need water, and they need good dirt to grow in. And yet, I have an uncanny ability to give a plant too much water or not enough, too much sun or not enough, and heavens only knows the difference between good and bad dirt. I just know what dirt looks like in general. It's incredible that for all of the moments when life is so resilient that it can be such a challenging balancing act to figure out how to help something thrive. The Christian faith is all about that, about sustaining life, about helping the living thrive. The Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus says to his disciples, I come so that you might have life and you might live it to the full. There are a lot of different ways that we try to sum up the Christian faith. One of the more familiar ways, but more challenging ways we do that is by talking about sin, about how people sin and we shouldn't, that we do these things that aren't good when we should be doing the things that God wishes for us. I think that, think that the plant metaphor is valuable in this regard. For in a lot of instances, talking about sin brings up difficult conversations about what is and isn't sin. How do you tell the difference between what we should and shouldn't do? Sometimes the rules feel very arbitrary, as though we should be using scripture as sort of legal case law to determine in which different instance we should do which different thing. But I don't think it's quite that cut and dry. Jesus says, I come so that you might have life, you might live it, to the full. The important thing to know about sin is that it's the opposite of what helps us thrive. And just like a plant, it may not always be easy to do. There may not be broad categories to rely on, sun, water, dirt. It might be a more delicate act of balancing all of the different things that make up a life. Plants are individual and unique. They need different things to thrive, just as all of God's creation are individual and unique. We need different things in order to thrive. It's not so much a list of do's and don'ts, but an invitation to find the balance that helps us live life to the full. And thankfully, I might be a terrible gardener, but God is a good one. We're not left to stumble through life on our own, wishing we didn't or did do different things, but trusting God who cultivates life in each of us. Thanks be to God.